Now to a breaking news alert we've been following all day. At least six people presumed dead after the collapse of Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge. And officials say that bridge collapsed when a ship actually crashed into the abutment early this morning. Maryland's governor declaring a state of emergency as recovery operations continue into the evening. The ship's crew was able to issue a May Day call just moments before that crash, so authorities did have enough time at least to stop most of the traffic that was coming over the bridge. However, eight construction workers were on the deck doing pothole repairs at the time. They're presumed to be dead uh, given the water's depth and the length of time since the collapse. This very alarming incident got us looking into bridge safety here at home and what steps are in place to protect the drivers who use these bridges. News Channel 3's Kimberly Keggy breaks down our protocols in our region. The key bridge has collapsed. It's shocking um, and heartbreaking. Maryland Governor Wes Moore searched for the appropriate words to describe the tragedy when the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed after being hit by a cargo ship. Investigators still don't know if any other issues with the bridge contributed to that quick collapse. But we wanted to know about the safety of our bridges at home. The Francis Scott Key Bridge was built in the 1970s. That's roughly around the same time when a majority of our bridges were built. We found all three states in our area say they follow federal law which requires routine bridge inspections to be done at least once every two years. Engineers say the bridges that show wear or tear may be inspected sooner or immediately following a situation. The shipping company says the container ship that brought down the nearly two mile steel bridge was about 984 feet. That's roughly the size of the Eiffel Tower lying on its side. U.S. Coast Guard Commander William Albright says the ships that travel the inland waterways are smaller in size. That's true for the towing vessels or barges that travel along the Ohio River. Ships that transit uh, in the Baltimore area, those are your large ocean-going coastal vessels, uh, which could reach up to 200,000 tons. Compared to our inland for boats, even with barges, our, they might be pushing somewhere around 24,000 gross tons. But despite the size, we wanted to know if our regions prepared if something like this happened. In fact, we told you back in 2020 when a pillar of the Pomeroy Mason Bridge was hit by a runaway barge on the Ohio River. The Division of Highways found no visible damage left behind. The next year, in 2021, a loose barge was headed toward the Ravenswood Bridge, though crews were able to secure it before an incident happened. Experts say they're prepared for an all-hands-on-deck situation. So annually, we're going to train anywhere from uh, probably one to five or six times a year, depending on which agency. Uh, just last summer, we conducted a mass rescue operation, which included several of the local regional hospitals and several of our county, uh, state, local, and federal partners within the area. And what that does is it just prepares us should there be an event where there is a mass cash response. There's the collapse leaving communities hundreds of miles away stunned. Kimberly Keggy, WSAZ News Channel 3. So we also asked if the states will do any additional inspections following the collapse that happened today in Maryland. All three states assured us our bridges are up to date on those existing inspections.